Good morning. It's uh, Friday morning, May the 16th, and uh, coming at you with a YouTube video a bit later in the week than I had planned, and even still my office is not completely set up. This is uh, my desk is a small table temporarily here with my desktop and my telephone on it, so uh, you make do with what you got, right? Um, but I wanted to uh, do this video, kind of summarize where we are to this point, and uh, make mention of some things that I've posted today and go through a couple of those. Um, I posted um, all of the week's PowerPoints uh, for the chapters that are listed in this introduction to uh, demography segments, so those are out there. I have also uh, posted the readings, um, though so far there might be one or two more yet, but uh, though so far those are posted in the readings folder, and uh, you should have access to those. And, um, and I posted a Profs Notes 2 for uh, introduction to segment. There will probably be another one next week, one well, about every week, shall we say. Um, that the one that today talks about um, its summary, some summary of the chapters um, for this segment, uh, introduction to demography, and um, some summary of the articles themselves, and um, and then places some emphasis on the demographic transition. And I'll come back to that here in um, in a second. So, first thing I just wanted to. Uh, highlight with you uh, is the week's text and uh, hopefully you've had a chance to start reading through that. That's the primary reading uh, for this week. Uh, now that you've got that kind of a background you can move on to the um, move on to the uh, uh, regular reading, so the readings in the big capital R folder. Um, I think you'll find as you read this that week's is very uh, readable um, Fairly easy to understand, pretty straightforward, I think, in his presentation of the information. So uh, I, I think it's a good book. It's a very uh, commonly used book in demographic undergraduate and graduate courses around the country and probably around the world, for that matter. Uh, I met him some years ago. He's just uh, he's a dedicated um, author and uh, teacher, and uh, I think he does this uh, does this well. But anyway, you'll see there that we uh, there's quite a lot of things we've been doing. Uh, you've been doing already, I think. Uh, I think you maybe you've gone up and done your um, uh, your footprint to see what sort of ecological impact you yourself have on this planet of ours, and how many how many planets it would take if everybody in the world um, lived at the rate of resource utilization as you do. I'm pretty ecologically minded in terms of um, recycling, I guess you'd say. And, um, you know, like I brush my teeth, I turn the water off. And then when I want to rinse the toothbrush, I turn it back on, then I turn it off. So I do a lot of things that I can, that way, that in, in my own way to try and uh, save or reduce my impact. But even so, uh, recycling and all of that. I think it's four and a half planets it would take if everybody in this country or in this world on the planet uh, utilized resources as I do. So we have a lot of things to think about in that implications of our acts and we'll talk more about that as we go through the semester, particularly later in the semester. Um, you'll notice as you read this text and my notes that uh, the population that we're talking about, it's not about, it is about structure, you know, uh, particularly like age and um, and gender, but uh, it's really about process, and the word that we use is transition. It's about movement through time. So we don't really look at images of population structure fixed in time, unless we're doing it, say, in 2000, and then we look at it again in 2012, two, two cross-sectional images. But really the way we want to think about this, even though we'll do some of that, is trends, and transitions. Uh, fertility, for example, why for some populations is it high at one point, and then a generation or two generations later begins to decline, fertility drops, uh, mortality is high at some point in a, uh, in a population and over a course of time it drops. So um, we're really about this, what we'll call demographic transition and we put it in a big D and a big T and there's a, uh, a visualization image of it up on the, uh, in that folder of readings and uh, it's a couple of articles that I want you to take a look at on the transition. But you can see when you look at, um, for example, 
chapter three, demographic perspectives, uh, Weeks lists six or seven transitions there. And I'm sure we could come up with some more by the end of the semester, but those are the major transitions. So it's really about transition, transition and change. How does the interaction of fertility and mortality change the dynamic or the dy not only the dynamic, but the structure of the population? Um, and then the input of migration, like in South Texas, for example, um, the younger fertility rate that incoming migrants from Mexico bring and um, they encounter our uh, higher, perhaps, fertility rate, somewhat higher fertility rate. So they, you know, they are lower fertility rate, rather, so that when they come in, the fertility rate in South Texas and elsewhere begins to rise again. And uh, lots of interesting things, implications of this to talk about as we go through the semester. So uh, think about that. I have a, a um, discussion theme out there that's sort of a general theme on talking about ideas and issues at this foundational level that we're laying at this point in the introduction to demography for the more practical uh, applications, demographic techniques of fertility, mortality, migration later in the semester. Um, I guess that's enough about uh, the text. Um, in the notes, you'll see as we talked about even Prof's notes, um, we're looking at formal demography, which is the measures, the sort of the math side, the rates of fertility, mortality, migration, and we're trying to explain them uh, with uh, social demography, so that uh, where Y in our case might be a fertility rate, on the other side of the equation might be some sort of contextual feature that of socioeconomics that as socioeconomics improves, fertility drops. Uh, we'll look at those relationships uh, when we get on um, fertility when we get to fertility later. But they're already being talked about in the readings this, uh, in this uh, segment on introduction to uh, demography. So that demographic transition is something to begin to visualize, get a good grasp of what's going on there as fertility, fertility declines over time and so does mortality and their interaction both high at one end and then as time goes by they both are down much lower. Um, fertility drops sooner uh, because decisions can be made not to have children and then some of the contextual features that uh, influence the decline in mortality are more slower to come into play to reduce mortality. So take a look at that. The other thing that I want you to do is about visualizations is to go to that census uh, link that I gave you in these notes and look at a couple of population pyramids, and you'll see what those are in the notes. I have to talk about them too much right now. Um, and look at the shapes of those population pyramids to pick two countries of interest. I suggest that you look at U.S. and Afghanistan because they're so, well, first off, Afghanistan is very much part of our life here in the U.S. Uh, we talk about it a lot, but look, they're very different in their shape. Uh, uh, Afghanistan's pyramid is broad and then quickly becomes very narrow, very peaked kind of like this, if I can put it that way. Whereas the U.S. is kind of like a leaf. Actually, it should be an inverted leaf, if I can make this work. Can't make it work. But it's a little narrower at the bottom and broader as it goes up. What that, and maybe in a way not so broad, uh, broad as, as broad at the bottom as it is about halfway up. What that means is that mortality, one thing that gives that shape, the assumption in population pyramids is they were once rectangular. Uh, theoretically, if everybody lived who was born to 100 years, it would be a rectangle. They'd go up to 100 years and then, uh, and then die. That's mortality compression. We'll talk about that. It's an interesting phenomenon that might freak you out when we get to the mortality segment, but we'll worry about that one later. But in any case, if you look at, uh, if you look at the Afghanistan pyramid, if everyone that was born, which is represented at the base, that's the fertility rate, were to live, it wouldn't be peaked like this, it would be rectangular. So what's cr creating the shapes of the pyramid, giving them that rectangle, the pyramidical shape, is the mortality experience of the population. Mortality is very high in Afghanistan. So the side of that rectangle is eroded into the shape of a pyramid. And we're going to calculate, we're going to do population pyramids when we get to mortality in, I don't know, a uh, month or so from now. You'll, we're going to do them on Excel. They're pretty easy to set up. You'll see how it works. You'll pop them right out immediately, the image. You'll create a population pyramid. You'll have a good time doing it. I like it. It's very representative of the demographic transition. And they are represented by, if you look at uh, Afghanistan and compare the U.S., where more, for, a lot of the, for the most part, people who are born live. 
And you'll see if you look at the one of the U.S. in 2020, it peaks at the top. That's because this uh, bulge of uh, successfully surviving individuals hasn't quite uh, rectangularized at the top. If you go to 2050 and look at Afghanistan in 2050, you'll see it's beginning to rectangularize. So take play around with that. And then that, we would say, as we would say for the demographic transition, is a generalized why uh, outcome. Uh, are a generalized formal demographic look, uh, whereas on the right-hand side of that equation is the social demography. So if you're looking at that population pyramid for Afghanistan, you'll see in that drawdown menu where you can do the pyramid, you can also get demographic data for Afghanistan. Take a look at what they got. Look at the high rates of death and the high rates of fertility and other kinds of of uh, contextual features that they give you that can give you some idea of what's happening on the right-hand side of the equations, social demographically speaking, that's producing that formal demographic population pyramid. So that's really where I want you to be. It's a lot of it's about visualizing, getting the instinct for demography and the value of, of what it does. Um, a lot of what I do in health, it's um, uh, demographic uh, events or outcomes, health outcomes. I want to understand neighborhoods, why one neighborhood has a higher death rate than another neighborhood or something like that. And we'll talk more about that as time goes by. So I think that's enough for now. It's probably going to be a long YouTube and uh, you know, after about 15-20 minutes it's like, huh. So I'm going to go ahead and um, close this out. I think we got what we wanted to get said. And uh, I'll be back up on a YouTube later next week and another round of Prof's Notes uh, somewhere towards later next week. And I uh, posted that discussion. Get into discussion. Just relax. Throw some ideas out there. Comments about, wow, that's an interesting looking thing that I'm seeing. Um, and let's just let's talk. What we want to do is just talk. Always in these online courses, we want to imagine that we're sitting around a, uh, a seminar table. You and me, uh, uh, graduate students and the graduate prof, having conversations about the things that we're uh, reading about. And, and all of that. So use a discussion as a round table discussion as though we were sitting in a seminar table. All right, I'm very glad to be here. Uh, it's a good, uh, gonna be a good summer. And uh, this is my, kind of my fourth day, this demography stuff. So I look forward to working with you. And uh, it's Friday, uh, weekend's coming up. And uh, y'all be safe out there. And uh, talk to you next week.